it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. Now we've already run into a few snags here. Um, firstly, I went to the cake supply store which I haven't gone to in way too long and they were all out of fondant, like completely. The only fondant color they had was yellow and I really didn't have time to go to another store so I'm gonna have to leave that task for tomorrow. I'm hoping that I can find fondant because I don't make my own fondant. It takes a long time, it's messy, and I just really, really love satinized fondant, as you guys know if you watch my channel. So I'm really, really hoping that I'll be able to get some. When I went to the baking supply store, all I got were these cake drums, which, I mean, I needed them, so great. And then I got this new Dazzle Dust. And I'm so excited to try it. Um, I've run out of my really, really good gold luster dust. So this has been blowing my mind on social media. I hope it blows my mind in person. This vlog is going to be a little bit different in that, of course, I'm still gonna give you some technical tips and explain what I'm doing throughout the video, but I also wanna give you guys a life update. It is officially the end of summer. This is the last week before school begins, and if you don't already know, I am an elementary music teacher, so I have to go back as well. Unlike most years though, I actually really want to go back to school this year. Normally, I don't get enough summer, but I think because the kids are getting older now, we're able to accomplish a lot more in a shorter period of time. And I just feel like I thrive throughout the school year and I'm so ready to put on another musical, put on more shows, and just get going with my students. In the life of a music teacher, I tend to move schools a lot, so I am going to another new school this year, which means I'm going to have to learn hundreds and hundreds of kids' names, and it's a very unique situation to be in. I'm also working a little bit less this year. As you guys know, I'm putting more work into this channel, more work into my baking, and a lot of big personal changes happened for me this past summer, so I really didn't get through all of the goals and things that I had planned for this channel and for my baking brand in general, but I am very, very focused to get going on that. Without saying too much, it is going to include another baker friend of mine. So while those cakes were in the oven, I did the dishes, and then by the time I was done the dishes, the cakes came out of the oven. Fun fact, I am using my go-to vanilla recipe. This is actually the base recipe that I used in the cake competition show that I was in, Cross Country Cake Off. If you guys didn't catch that, by the way, I believe it is now available on Crave, so you can watch that. I leveled off and crumb coated all of the cakes. This was the main thing that I wanted to get done on this particular day. And I always try to make sure that I leave all of my crumb coated cakes in the fridge overnight. It just makes everything way easier for when I'm decorating the cakes. Usually I put a sugar syrup on the cake, but this time I didn't because I knew it was going to be eaten fairly quickly. It was for a big, big event the next day. So I didn't bother this time around. I do have a bunch of cake scraps from this caking day but I haven't really been inspired by any new cake pop like projects. So let me know down in the comments below what I should make next. Truthfully though, the biggest thing that's been on my mind is getting prepared for Bake Fest. I am going to be talking for 60 minutes straight, which although I feel like I have done on lives and things like that, normally I'm cooking something or baking something or decorating something, so it kind of gives your hands something to do. This is literally going to be me and you guys just full on talking. And it's really very lecture style for the first part of it. And I know I have some really great juicy details to share that I've never shared before, but it doesn't make me any less nervous to publicly speak. All right, it is the next day. The cakes have been sitting in the fridge, crumb coated overnight. I like to do this so that it's really, really easy to decorate them. No slipping, no sliding around whatsoever. I just got back from the gym. And then I did a little grocery shop. This will probably last us a week and it's $400 worth of groceries. Isn't that insane? So yesterday I was telling you guys about how I want satin ice, can't find satin ice. For some reason they're not stocking satin ice at my local stores. So we are actually going to be working with this today. Not my favorite brand, not my least favorite brand, but just not my favorite for fondant. Um, but what was convenient about this 
was I was able to get it with my grocery shop and I always do online pickup because with the kids it's just way easier for me to do that and I find it's more budget friendly because then I can really think about how much I'm spending as opposed to just shoving things in a cart. All right, let's get these cakes covered. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Bake Fest. Sorry if you are annoyed about me constantly talking about it. It just seems like some of you are still slightly confused about what it is and I don't blame you. It's basically an online mecca, if you will, where you're able to access a bunch of classes that you would normally have to pay individually for, for the price of one admission. And I see that a lot of you guys have bought tickets, which is fantastic. I myself am looking forward to some of the workshops that they're going to be having as well, aside from my fantastic exciting workshop all about how to build a brand on YouTube yourself. Unfortunately the early bird special has now in fact passed so tickets will be full priced from now on but if you want an additional 15% off you can use my code SDBAKESHOP15 at checkout. And to be really, really clear, it is a fully online event, so it doesn't matter what part of the world you guys are from. I know I have a lot of American friends on here, but I also have a lot of you from other regions as well. This is your time where you can actually join in on the baking fun. I know a lot of times, if you're not in North America, you're excluded from these experiences, but you are able to join in on this. So please do, I would love to see you guys at BakeFest. Getting back to our cake here, I am using a mold today. I was going to make ruffled roses, just those kind of ribbon roses that you use with thinned out pieces of fondant, but judging from the picture that my friend gave me, I decided to go with this instead. I thought it was a lot closer. I received an interesting comment on one of my videos the other day and it was featuring this cake and I gave a price quote. I think I said this was going to be $975 Canadian. If I were to sell this cake, you guys know I just gift all of my cakes and I provide you with the quotes just so you guys have a little bit more of a knowledge of what cakes cost right now. So anyway, the commenter had mentioned that that price point would be fair if the flowers looked more realistic and if this had been done a different way other than with using a mold. This isn't so much a discussion about the original comment. I mean, the commenter is allowed to feel however they want to feel about the price of the cake and what they would personally prefer. Much of the time though, when I am creating something on my channel, somebody has given me a little bit of a frame of reference. Now, for the most part, I do make my own creative choices. But in this instance, I was actually shown two pictures and then I meshed them together and that's how I came up with this particular style. Basically what I'm personally saying is that work is work and to actually thin things out doesn't take that much longer. That's more of a style preference. So it wouldn't actually change the pricing whatsoever. From a customer standpoint, of course, you want to make sure that you're getting your cake in the style that you want, especially and when of you're course, from a seller box. standpoint, you just want to make sure that you're ultra clear about what it is that your customer is going to be receiving. And chances are, if they like your work and they're choosing you, then you're already pretty much good to go. That was such a tangent. This video is just all over the map, but I hope you guys are enjoying just my random thoughts as you watch me cake decorate. Fun fact, much of the time while I'm cake decorating, if I'm not concentrating super, super hard and I'm doing something kind of mundane like this where I'm just creating leaves over and over again to create these petals for the angel wings, then I can just kind of turn off my brain a little bit and start to think about something else. And much of the time, it's me just kind of thinking about what I'm going to say in my voiceovers, how I'm going to frame particular videos that I'm making, and when I need to turn the camera off so I can create a short in the middle. Let's get back to the cake, guys. So I wasn't really sure how to make these angel wings in the first place. First, I started putting on all of the thinned out leaves directly onto the cake, and it was okay, but it wasn't giving me that shape that I wanted, and I knew I needed a little bit of shape and lifting, so I decided to cut out a template just kind of haphazardly and then place the leaves on there. You'll notice I have a cutter behind the wing. It's really just to hold things up. You know, anytime you have fondant flopping over or something that's not hardening fast enough, you can always use something like a cutter or a tool that's very, very light. If you don't have that or you need to actually use it on the project, you can also use balled up pieces of paper towel, which works really well. 
I did a little review of this Dazzle Dust in a short and I really, really cannot say enough good things about this Luster Dust. I've used Luster Dusts in past that have this same type of quality, but they weren't fully edible. And I know a few of you were panicking about what I meant by not fully edible. Basically, it's still safe to eat in small amounts. It's just that you're not actually digesting it. Kind of like corn, you never actually digest that fully either when we eat it. But this Luster Dust is fully edible, which is just fantastic. And then I used some of these edible pearls to finish everything off. If you've ever worked with edible pearls before and you don't steam your cakes beforehand, you might notice that things pop off or that you have to actually indent the cake a little bit before you can insert them. Steaming your cake with just a regular old clothing steamer is gonna do the trick and don't over steam or else everything starts coming off and sliding off. So you just steam for a few seconds or so and then go ahead and stick things on just so that things are tacky enough. This cake survived the 30 minute long drive to the venue and it lasted all night long until we cut it. Everybody was really all about the ganache layers. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!